All right, so this is the beginning of a series of videos to show you how to go about creating a corridor. So up to this point in class, we've taken a look at adding points, uh, creating a surface, and creating alignments. So now this video is going to show you how to create this profile view, as well as our existing ground surface profile. And then the next video after this, I'll show you how to create this design profile. So where we're going to start is from this drawing that I provided to you, it's P9-49. It actually came out of your technical drawing textbooks. So I've already done this for you. So the first thing is once you get it opened up and you get it saved on your network drive, just type the word layoff and then select the boundary of this picture and that will turn that layer off. And so that picture was the only thing on that layer. It was layer P9-49. It's now turned off and you can see in here, all I've done is created all these points and I create a surface and I create an alignment. If we come over to tool space on the prospector tab, you can verify all this. So under point groups, you'll find the point group all points. And if you scroll over and then scroll down, you'll see some 700 points in there. Under surfaces, if you expand it out, you'll see I made an existing ground surface. The definition, I just added the point group all points to be able to define that surface. And then under alignments, you'll find one centerline alignment called Weber Parkway. And that's this green alignment coming through here. So now we're ready to create our profile view. So up here on the home tab of the ribbon, we're going to come on over to profile and, and click on create surface profile. In here, we select our alignment. We only have one. So we're going to use Weber Parkway, select our surface. We only have one. So that's going to be existing ground. We're going to start at the start and end at the end of our alignment. So that all looks good. So we'll click on add and it shoots this surface profile down here. It happened to name it surface with parentheses one around it. We could always change that if we wanted to. I'm just going to leave it alone. We're going to hit OK. When I do that, I get this message that says my profile has been created and listed in Prospector. Use the create profile view command to display in profile view. So you can find it over here. Profiles are listed under the alignment it was created from. So from Weber Parkway, now there's a profile named surface one. You won't see any of the changes because we don't have a profile view. So let's go make a profile view. So on the home tab of the ribbon, we're going to click on this icon and click create profile view. So to create our profile view, we're going to walk through each one of these links. But first, we're going to start on the general tab and select your alignment. So it's going to be Weber Parkway. The profile view name, uh, this is set up to give it a name automatically. So we'll just leave that alone. If you want to type a description in, you can. Under Profile View Style, we'll click where it says Major Grids and HGP, and we're going to select the standard Profile View Style. Once we've selected it, we're going to click on this little arrow and copy current selection. Click on the Information tab, and let's give it a name such as SATC Profile View Style. Now we can start working through each one of these tabs to create the style of profile view that we want. So the first thing is under graph. You'll see this is where you find your vertical scale and what you're going to set your vertical scale to in comparison to your drawing scale. So we're going to leave it alone. Come on over to grid. We've got uh, some options in here. One thing I know I want to change is this grid padding. So we'll just go ahead and change all those to zero right now. And then we'll take a look uh, after we create our profile view. I'll show you a way that you can directly edit it and you can make changes and then apply those changes so you can easy, it'll be easier to understand what each of these are. So I'm just going to make those changes and then we'll just keep going. So come on over to title annotation. Uh, here, one thing I know is we're going to use the SATC annotative text style. So select the one without the hyphens. Our text height, we always use 0.125 in my class, so we can change that. For my access title text over here, we can also set that to be SATC annotative, text height to be 0.125. And you'll notice that everything inside of this box applies to right now the bottom axis. So if you also wanted to modify the top axis, you have to select that radio button. If you're going to modify the right axis and the left, 
you have to select those and change each one of those individually. And that's consistent throughout. So we just made some changes to the bottom. That's it. Go over to horizontal axes. So over here, my major tick details, I'll leave that stuff alone. Text height, change it to 0.125. My text style, make it SATC annotative and leave everything else alone there. Over here in the minor tick section, change my tick size to be 0.125. Text height, might as well change it to 0.125. My text style, change it to SATC annotative and then that looks good. Horizontal geometry tick details. We don't display these in the profile view, so these settings don't matter at, at all. So again, those were changes to the bottom. If you wanted to make those same changes to the top, you'd have to select top and then make the changes. The two are not linked. You can have different specifications for your bottom as well as the top axis. So we just changed the bottom, we're going over to vertical axis now. Same story, we've got a left and a right. We're just gonna make some changes to the left. So over here, text type 0.125, text style SATC annotated, the one without hyphens. Minor tick details, change my tick size to be 0.125, text type to be 0.125, text style to be SATC annotated. That all looks good there. Now on over here to display. So display, this is where we pick and choose what we want to be visible in our profile view. So after we've created our profile view. So a few things in here, like I know I'm not going to show a graph title this time, so I'll go ahead and turn it off. Uh, my left axis title, I want it to be turned off as well. And everything else, I'll just leave it the way it is, and then we'll edit it later. So at this point, I can go ahead and hit, hit click OK. And now I'm going to set the layer that I want my profile view to be inserted on. So I'll click on this little icon. It takes me out to my object layer dialog box. I'll click on that same icon again. It takes me out to my list of layers. And in here, I'm going to find the C Road Prof layer. So I'll select it, hit OK. I'm going to add a suffix for a modifier. And I'm going to make that modifier hyphen T A B L and then hit OK. So that makes the layer that this is going to go on C Road Profile Table. And then I'll just click on Next. So my station range, I'll just let my profile view in Civil 3D control that. So it's going to start at the beginning and end at the end. Click on Next. I'll also let it control the elevation that's going to display in my profile view. So I'll just click on Next. Here in my profiles, so I only have one surface profile right now. We could have multiple surface profiles. We could have multiple design profiles. This is where you would pick and choose which of those profiles you want to be displayed in this particular profile view. Since I only have one, it's going to be the one being displayed. So I'm not going to make any changes. Just click on Next. Here under Data Bands, we'll just select No Data Bands and hit Next. And then under our Profile Hatch Options, uh, this you'd have to have two different surfaces that you are comparing to and add your cut area and add your fill area and they would be displayed in your profile view. We don't have two different surfaces, but we're just going to click on create profile view. And here, Civil 3D wants me to select profile view origin, so I'll just click some point off over here to the right and it creates my profile view. So as you can tell, I've got a little work to do to get it to look like this. So the first thing is I'm just going to kind of move my profile view over off to the right. And once you've done that, go ahead and click on that profile view anywhere and you'll get this option for profile view properties. Click there, click on edit profile view style. So this is the way that we can make changes directly, hit apply and we'll see what happens over here. So the first thing is under the graph tab, click on graph tab on your vertical scale. Let's make it one inch equals 50 feet. Click apply and you can see how that's changed your profile view. At this point, I'm going to go, go ahead and hit OK so that I can zoom and make my profile view bigger. And then with that profile view selected, come back to profile view properties, click on edit profile view style and start working my way through each one of these. So the first tab is grid. For grid, I made a few changes. Uh, all six of these boxes on the top are checked, so make sure they're checked and then compare this screenshot 
to what you have, then go on over to title annotation. Title annotation looks good, so just compare yours to mine, and then let's go over to horizontal axes. One thing I need to change here, this is my horizontal axis, so that this is these station labels. I want to get rid of those zeros. So the way to get rid of those is there under major tick details, this tick label text, click on this A off to the side, it takes us out to this text editor. So click on the information on the right, change it on the left to be to the nearest foot, push it over, and then hit OK. Hit apply, and you'll see how those change. And then also they're a little too close to the tick mark, so I want to drop that text down. So I'm going to apply a Y offset of minus 0.0625 inches. And then when you hit apply, you'll see those station labels move down. Everything else looks good, so compare yours to mine. And then let's go on over to vertical. So vertical, again, I'm just working on the left side. So the same changes under tick label text. Click there, click the text on the right. Make your changes on the left, push it over, hit OK, click Apply, and you'll see how those elevation numbers change. Same thing, I need to apply an offset. So this is going to be an X offset, so I'll do minus 0 0.065 again. Click on Apply, and it shoots them over. Then that finishes up our vertical axes. So then the last thing we have is Display. So again, you come in here, you make some changes, you hit Apply. So let me go ahead and make all the changes and show you what it should look like. All right, so I made 10 or 15 changes to which different components I want to be displayed. So just go ahead and compare yours to mine right here. So that takes you all the way down to bottom axis annotation major. And then here's the rest of them. So from bottom axis annotation major on down, that's what they should look like. Go ahead and hit OK. And then this is what your profile view should look like. So then the last thing we have to do is the layer that we copied. It had a line type associated with it. So let's just bring up our layers. So I'll type in LA and hit enter. I want to go down to C road profile table right there and change my line type to be a continuous line type. Hit OK. Close out of my layers. And now that's what your profile view should look like. So hopefully you're able to follow along with that. Uh, good luck working on this. And after you get through with this, then the next video is going to be creating your design profile. So I'll get started on that now. Thanks for listening and thanks for working along.